Ooh, I've seen things on Twitch and hearing Excellent. things too. Hearing things? Mm hmm. I think it's that she's invented imaginary friends because they're more interesting to talk to than me. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sketch and Scotch, where we make Steve draw things. If you want to come and chat with us, come on over to Twitch. It's www.twitch.tv slash Steve Argyle, all one word. J-Doodle. Draw the cause of the technical difficulty. Was it rats eating Steve's electri electrical wiring, or was it... Minox chewing on the power cables. Or was it Bob the turkey swallowing the <laughs> mic? In the meantime, Scott, tell us about Spectrum. Uh, yes, so well, tell us what Spectrum is. is. Um, it's an art con that they hold once a year. They're best known actually for their Spectrum books that they've been printing for 25 years, Something 24 like that. years. It's the convention of a lot of the, many of the top artists um, in fantasy and well, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so as an art geek, I just got to go and just freak out and meet some of my, some of my heroes out there. It was Who'd fun. you get to meet? Um, I met lots of people. There's lots of magic artists out there, so I got lots of prizes for the TNT show. Tell people what the TNT show is. Oh, so, but I do a weekly web series. It's a geek-based game show, and we just talk about nerd topics and give out lots of prizes and have a good time doing that, and that's called the TNT show. Boy, I met lots of people. The, the one I probably freaked out the most is Brom. Uh, he's an artist I respected forever. I've only seen pictures of him. You know, he's a pretty big dude. He's got a big beard. He was always, he's a deep southerner. And he paints uh, really gothic stuff, so I was kind of, I, I didn't know what to expect. I was totally nervous. I was like, I don't know what this is going to be. And uh, I get up there, and he's just the nicest, most laid-back guy. Totally soft-spoken. Totally really. soft-spoken, yeah. His wife was absolutely wonderful, just super nice. My whole experience backs up what Steve always says about you go to the artists, and they're just, everybody's, like, really, really nice. I tried not to name-drop too much, but just, you know, <laughs> I knew if some people knew... Um, Kat and Steve here that, you know, I, I mentioned maybe to a couple of them and they're always very complimentary. I have to tell you that uh, Justin Gerard, um, I mentioned you guys because we were talking about his dragons and you guys had mentioned his dragons and he was... We have one of his dragons in he, he sang very high praise. He was like, oh my gosh, you, and he was just, he, you're, he was talking about your pencil line work, Steve. And he just said, he said, nobody can do it like you do. <laughs> Um, yeah. So he was he was super nice about that. Just to let you know, uh, we do a J Doodle. Steve has seven minutes to draw, and he's just completed uh, a picture that we randomly give him. This week's picture was the source of the audio problems, which <laughs> is evidently a mosquito playing banjo, singing into the mic. We'll get on to business. All right, Steve, give us a demo of what we're going to talk about today, and then we'll do a commercial break. We're Same thing with teas. Silly. Landscapes, because that's something that people have asked for a few times. It's not exactly my specialty, but we'll talk about it anyway. Because with a, a nice enough landscape, you can just throw like a silhouette of a dude and a dragon or something, and you've, you've suddenly got a book cover, so. This commercial break is brought to you by uh, Joe's, Mo uh, Joe's Mosquito Repellent. Sounds like we need to invest. So Steve is now talking about atmospheric perspective, a.k.a. volumetric fog and occlusion. Wow, Steve, you want to use your art words. Art words are neato. The term that is most often used is atmospheric perspective. I don't usually use that because perspective kind of throws you off, but atmospheric perspective is the receding into the distance. Uh, you have mountains, like, as things get further away, they start to blend into the background because the, you're getting a little bit of either fog or just plain enough air in between you that, uh, or light scattering through the air, that things change color and they change contrast. And they uh, call that atmospheric perspective in classical art and in CG rendering and stuff like that. They call it volumetric fog or volumetric occlusion. I call it volumetric fog because occlusion is another another kind of confusing word because you have occlusion shadows. Robert the Viking said he loves having English as a fourth language and still figuring out what you speak, and he's still able to figure out what you're talking about. <laughs> Our terminology is weird, partially because it's all evolved in in strange ways, but also because it's not common language. You don't you don't talk about art in an informed way very often you get these old traditional weird terms. So a volumetric perspective, what it does is 
things that are here. So here we have everything is clear and contrast. And then as it goes over here, it becomes faded into the background color. The simplest way to start with a background is you pick two colors. Doesn't even matter what two colors, pick two colors. So we'll say yellow -y thing and a green -y thing. Steve, I'm sending you over a really great example of atmospheric perspective. It also will demonstrate, once we show it, the idea of if you do a really awesome background that's really pretty landscape, then you can just do a silhouette of something in the front and it looks awesome. Everything is, is fading out to this sky blue as it goes. You talked about the saturation and detail close up and then it goes down. So. You pick your two colors, and everything is going to fade from one to the other. But, of course, this is a side shot. We actually want to make what you would call a depth mask. That's another 3D term. So That's as it. you start, you can actually just use this little gradient as a palette. And this is a little bit of an oversimplified way of doing it, but you'll get the idea. And you can always start with this. Do our little mountain range in the background. We're going to work in layers, and this is basically the furthest back. Neon Thought said, let's put a happy little tree right over here. That's right. <laughs> that is really cool, the effect that that's doing. And I see where you're like, keep grabbing out of the color as it comes closer and closer. Mm -hmm. It's a nifty little trick that's super simple, but amazing. Yeah, Steve. you can see how you can, you can get your background started really fast and you've got foreground and you've got background and you've got all kinds of things but steve you know the problem now and they already asked for it asterexo says now you just need to make five of them <laughs> one swamp one plains <laughs> eritrell asked uh, she asked uh how are you doing this so heckin fast <laughs> it's silly steve you're <laughs> silly, silly. <laughs> i love it I agree. Oh my gosh, you put a cute, adorable little mantis in there. He's mm -hmm. so cute. This would be just like the, f the fog layer, right? Um, all by itself, this feels very, very foggy. You can take this and you can start adding your light sources and you can start doing, you can put a sky in the background, you can do all that kind of stuff. Th these are not colors that are typical for a background. Normally it would be a nice blue sky receding to kind of a, a brown earthy. That's a, a scheme you'll see all the time, but I picked two weird background colors to show you that it doesn't matter. It's the effect of things fading into the background and overlapping each other that gives you the sense of distance. You don't need to pick specific colors to make it look like a background. You don't need a sky blue background. And so you have your freedom to do whatever you want, uh, and then you can just start developing it. You can say, "Well, let's let's make a let's make a proper sky." And that's a really good base idea, though. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with the lemon drop yellow? We're gonna make some clouds. We're gonna make some nice little clouds. Happy, happy little, little happy clouds. clouds. Steve, you gotta start talking in that calmer. You're gonna just uh, put some right here. That was Steve's church when he was little. Every Sunday morning, he would wake up and watch Bob Ross. While you were watching Bob Ross, I was watching Scooby-Doo. I think you've come out ahead. <laughs> I watched a lot of Voltron, too. Yeah. <laughs> that one was just Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, it's that church on Sunday was waking oh, up and gotcha. watching Bob Ross. My church on Sunday was getting to drag to church on Sunday, but I did well, a lot of drawing too. at church. I did too, actually. <laughs> I did a ton of drawing at church. It is interesting. Um, a lot of my best ideas I had or and still have when I'm stuck somewhere bored. It almost seems like it's easier to come up with ideas then than when you are totally free to just sit and work. I know there's a name for that principle, that coming up with your best ideas in the shower, or there's there's a name for that where the distracted mind is more creative. Scott, Neon Thought is calling you out and saying Gundam uh, Wing forever. I was just about to reply. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you. My, my best writing and best work, or I shouldn't say best art necessarily, but writing, have been uh, when I've been in meetings that I'm stuck in and I can't do anything else. I just zone out and I'll just write and I get some of the best chapters and stuff. <laughs> we should do a little commercial break while Steve's still doing his little happy clouds. Okay, this commercial break is brought to you by Brother Bob's Beard Bags. Great for keeping your beard happy while you're on an airplane. Do you need that? Is that a real thing? I have absolutely no idea, but I just went with your alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> Steve finished the clouds in the background, so he's coming in, and if you notice, he's adding a little contrast by adding highlights, and you can see that in the close-up, the highlights are very distinct and bright, 
and then they're kind of getting less and less further away. Way to use last week's lesson as well, Steve. What was last week's lesson? With the, the value of value. Oh, yes. I am self-referential. What I'm doing now is just um, adding a light source so that we can just bring out a detail. little bit of that. Raylan is wondering if there's a schedule for what cons will be doing this summer. Steve? Yes, there is. There is? I go to I'm my learning. website um, under, I think it's just calendar. Cabby's wondering how we got started with Luca. It was recommended to us. It was at San Diego Comic Con, and it was a... Uh, Lucio Prelo. Yes, he told us about he, that. He was like, you need to come to my country. You need to come hang out with us. And he sent an email to me and the director of Luca Comics and Games, and they said, yeah, you should come out. We already have our special guest for the year, but we'll fully uh, accommodate you and stuff. And so the special guests um, were Jason Felix and Stefan Martinier. Even though we we're not technically guests. They treated us like kings. Mm -hmm. They're so amazing. Um, and so we decided that we're we're coming back every year. Those guys were so awesome. Thanks, Skippy. You know what the best thing about Luca is, though? What? The atmospheric whatever you just said. Atmospheric <laughs> perspective, yes. Tuscany is full of atmospheric <laughs> perspective. You get the idea that you can build these things in, in depth and you can add them. You can say, well, I want something here, I want something there. And once you've built this basic background, you can just start using your color picker saying, well, let's make a sneaky little gopher right here. And maybe in the background you have flying eyeball bats like we drew in the beginning. Well, shouldn't it be like a dragon? Because you said beware smog. Well, this is Utah. Yeah, the, the dragon in the background. Beware, be beware smog. I wish that was our smog problem. Probably just as deadly, but quicker, and way cooler. Utah has uh, it, it gets measured now and then. It's usually between tenth and fifth worst air quality in the world. Not consistently though. I guess like three or four times a year our, our smog gets to that point because we have this unique situation in Utah in the valley because of the lakes and how the valley works that it just keeps and traps all. The inversion here is really really bad, worse than most places. And it really really traps the um, in the air and so we get really horrible smog five or six times a year we should probably start looking at squam work and such mm-hmm we'll start reviewing reviewing the squam work so guys you have five minutes to get your jay doodle in while we review the squam works i guess for our last little tiny thing since you uh you mentioned the enigma drake um i can show you a little bit of how you can do bloom <laughs> bloom is usually very very saturated color very bright and it bleed from a light source. If we put a little bit of that in here, it'll lend the effect that there's a very bright light source back here. And it's okay that we are spilling out into the stuff in the foreground. That's kind of the whole idea, is it's, it's so bright that it is overexposing. We're used to seeing this in photography, but we get a little bit of it with our, with our eyes as well. If we turn it on and off, you can see how it goes from uh, All right, just basic hazy to hazy with a big old bright light source behind it. One of the things I guess I haven't talked about before is I tend to really overdo stuff and then turn it down. So I put everything in separate layers and they're totally unorganized. I'll do something too strong and then I'll dial it back. Let's start talking about one work. On your average, I don't know if you can average project, how many layers do you think you, one of like your card mm -hmm. pictures would have? Probably <laughs> two or three hundred, but they're they're lazy layers. They're they're not like I make a layer and I name it and it's well organized and everything is is intentionally put on a layer. I basically I have a hotkey for new layer, and anytime I'm going to put something down that I'm not entirely sure I want there or I don't know how much of something I want, I won't like flatten things down as I go. I'll just keep throwing one layer on top of another on top of another, which is a bad habit and people will tell you not to do that. You should probably <laughs> listen to them, not me. Last week's scrum work was take a piece that you did in the past, either as a kid, like a cute little doodle, and then re redo it, reimagine it with new knowledge or new sassiness. This is squam work from Sabine. I love Sabine! Yeah. This is a cute little Paddington bear. That's cute. I like to see her her progression. That's really yeah. good. 
That's super cute. Thank you, Sabine, and thanks for um for participating and requesting to participate outside the time zone. The whole idea is that art makes life better. When you're drawing, you're making your brain work better, you're observing things that normally you wouldn't, you're thinking about how things are put together that you, uh, you normally might not. Art is about observing the world as it is and then creating new ones for yourself. Ah, this is Dan's old work. Wow, you Dan. You see a, a lot of improvement in musculature, proportion. Uh, um, I, his, I, even like the iconic work, like the mm -hmm. iconography of his ka uh, kanji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're a lot more confident with your line work. Your fur's gotten better. Musculature, yeah. Very nice. Anatomy oh. is... is Gotten. And yeah, because he kept working on his fur. See, Dan, yeah. your fur's gotten way better. Yeah. And, and Dan is explaining his squirm work. It was an original picture drawn in 2005 or 2006. Came from an L5R fanfic he wrote and drew tons of pictures of. And he chose that one because it happened to be his most popular, and he had another person use it for a tattoo. The next one is Esther Oxo, and he says that his old work was a high school watercolor that turned out terrible, and he got rid of it after nobody knew what it was. <laughs> and so he's trying to go off of memory, and that's totally okay if you're going off memory. Well, I have to tell you, Esther Oxo, we can tell what the picture is. It's an elephant ninja. Oh, gosh. It's right? me. It, it, it's a light, it's a light bulb, but yeah. And, and the funny thing is, I can see from that picture exactly like a high school um, watercolor. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna make you do a still life today. Here, I have a bulb. Have I'm a gonna bowl, put yeah. it on this <laughs> table. I can't even bring in a bowl of fruit. And this is Eritrell. Um, Eritrell said they're gonna qualify 15 as being little. Little. There's five years between the two. You make a lot. Wow. Of wow. Five years. That's really cool. I like the revisit. Yeah, a lot so more cool. dynamic with the lighting, the color scheme is the is sha stronger. The, the shadows are right, hey, look, look, so look. much more to it. Um, I actually have to say, like, I, it's background simple, but I really there. like that background, like the, the mm -hmm. swirliness. You want to make a world that they can live in, and so it doesn't have to be fancy, but it has to feel like they're, they're somewhere. Cabby was saying the hair has a lot of dynam dynamicism. Pose is more dynamic, um, and the background frames the figure really nicely, which is actually kind of what we were talking about last week, is the different colors between background and foreground and in between. Our next one is... Paradise. Paradise. So this is Paradise's um, Mopalop trying to fly and how they fly. <laughs> okay. Paradise, yeah, that's adorable. Cute. And did you see the tiny, tiny little wings? So um, last week we did an angel too fat to fly and how they use and different devices they use how to fly and I think this is Paradise's version of that. And so the catapult used to fling the lop -a -lop up the angel up into the air. I love the, the happy, joyous look on the angel's face, on the lop -a lops face. It's like so excited so about happy. flying. And, and the tiny wings are just bringing me so much joy. And then the little tiny bird to kind of give it the context of flying. That's super cute. Thank you, Paradise. Next is Britt. Britt was saying she was 11 years old-ish with the initial one. Wow. Britt has come a long way. <laughs> yeah, that's very impressive. So that's 20 years of change. Yeah, I, I really like how you've got, uh, you got this. She was awesome as a kid, too. Yeah. And guess what she did in the background? Yeah, so look at that background, yeah. <laughs> Bam! It's like she knew ahead of time. Brett was doing her... her atmospheric perspective. At, her atmospheric perspective. I really like the, the lighting scheme, too, how um, this angel's mostly in shadow because the light is hitting the back of her wing and coming just through a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a silhouette light here. Those wings look really cool, actually. Yeah. I've tried to draw wings. Like, don't knock wings until you've tried to draw they're, they're them. Oh my gosh, they're hard. so freaking hard really to draw. Hard. So, next up, Gypsy Tuna Fish. Thank you. The Gypsy's been here for three weeks in a row. Awesome. Um, Gypsy says they weren't she, they weren't sure how old they were, but uh, they kept they kept doing spelling mistakes. So, <laughs> is this pen and ink? This is really nice. I like the yeah, yeah. Looks like, yeah. That's great. That's very professional looking. Well, and I like yeah, Green. I like the the pictures are dancing with the really nice calligraphy and everything like that. Brittany said they, she'd totally buy that and put it in her son's room. Yeah. Yeah, good design. That That's how Eritro put that. I, I actually agree. That's a really good way to put it. The mm -hmm. overall design is very nicely put together. I was going to say, I really like the use of the typography. Cabby Boy is saying, lots of time, dedication, some diabolic packs with shady characters is how <laughs> this gets done. Um, and stripes. Nice. Just in time for the new movie. Very nice. Yeah, you've got a... 
Your proportions have gotten better. Getting a little bit more confident in your line work. Nice. Cookies are up. Now they're cooling. All right. Well, I think we have hit all nice. the squad work. Poison? All right, cool. Well, we'll start with that on the J-Doodles then. Now we're moving on to the J-Doodles. Today's J-Doodle topic is um, we had some sound problems earlier that just made it sound like super buzzy and horrible. And um, so that was the topic of the J-Doodle is, is what caused our sound problems. Paradise drew this awesome little static demon in Steve's monitor. I love the little, um, the little antenna. So cute. I think I have one of those in my computer too. <laughs> I think everyone has one of theirs in their computer. And when it just gets big enough after working hard enough and building up enough static, it then does something like what it did to our audio. It just waits until sketch and scotch. <laughs> this one's Dan. That's Dan, the, the angel, the or the lopalop singing mm -hmm. that uh, blew out. It exploded your mic. They have powerful voices. Yes, yes. Valkyrie lopalop. That, that awesome. is so great. Yeah, I just love the smoke coming off of the... <laughs> the, the former the, mic. The former mic. The thing no, formerly known as a mic. This is if Madonna were a lava lava. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. This is Asteroxo. Asteroxo. Hi Chip Westman, command you Emmer Cool, mess with the stream again. <laughs> and he's dug himself out of a grave. <laughs> <laughs> right on. He's got the shovel. And he's summoning with his shovel that he dug himself out with. He has summoned Emmer Cool. And all sorts of little, well, and the funny thing is, if you notice, what Emmercool's doing is bringing in all the little abomination monsters. Yeah, but down there, chewing on the cables. The rats from, from Innistrad. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Typhoid rats, yes. Aerotrill said Aerotrill. mini minions. It's min, 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 mini minions. <laughs> so Aerotrill thinks I did it on purpose. <laughs> Steve. Look, I am your father. That's a great picture of Steve, too. Yeah. <laughs> Exterminate. Eritrel, I love it. Steve was trying to get out of doing his J Doodle. That's what it was. He's just talking was... to the fan over there. Oh no, I have technical difficulties. I was stalling for you while you came up with a J Doodle. <laughs> That's what we're going with. Oh no, technical difficulties, quite can't think. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Cat's BFF said, whoever did this, good job at making Steve look human. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Paradise. Another one. Oh, it's a goblin and a mouse on the little, on the little mic. No, oh, it's just so cute. It's a girl goblin, too, from last week. Yeah, She's just, nice. like, covering all of her bases. I like the girl <laughs> goblin. It's very cute. She is super cute. I like the raggedy ears. The raggedy ears bring me joy. And the little tiny hair sprout. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that mouse is totally cute. Yes. And the mouse even has a little raggedy ear, too. Yep. He's so cute. Oh, Thank you, Paradise. This is Britt. Steve forgot to feed his bunny slippers. <laughs> <laughs> And I think she said she did it one-handed again this time. <laughs> Impressive. Uh, right. Britt can literally tie with a uh, draw with one hand yeah, tied behind her back. No more baby excuses. You're just embarrassing the rest of us here. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is that Steve did have bunny slippers, but he's actually upgraded. We have um, Zerg slippers now. Yeah, they're little, they're little Zerglings. Yeah, because they Zerg will chew less stuff. on cables. Uh huh. That's what I'm saying. Is, is it's actually gotten worse. Brittany says that your slippers went feral after you replaced them. For shame. That's why they started gnawing on your, uh, your cords. I thought that the Zergling ones would just take care of them. No, you, you got feral rabbits who've actually held their own against Zergs, which is terrifying. This is Gypsy Tuna Fish. Oh. <laughs> Girl unplugged your machine. <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> Oh, well, he's got to play on his Nintendo. That's the best reason for technical difficulties, is Gurr is messing with your stuff. <laughs> Playing on his That's Game awesome. Boy. Um, Kina is wondering if there's a time limit for working on squirm work, like to accomplish the task under a certain time. Um, just a week between next week and uh, between the end of this show and the end of next show is when you have to have this squirm work in. 
This is Scott's. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike, why? Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> That's Sorry, very that's dark. The, that was the first thing that came to mind. That's very, very dark. <laughs> it was your turn to go dark this time. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes we have... Uh... I just, oh! I just thought the idea of something electrical electrocuting itself. <laughs> that's terrible. Oh, no. Aww, now that's, that's a dark. super cute and pretty <laughs> and awesome and we're cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Cabby said this earlier, actually, when... Brit when um, when uh, Astroxos posted was you stole my idea <laughs> so they had the same idea which I love love our minions that they're all on that same page uh, that's an awesome emmer cool yeah. with the background it's with the moon and the I like the texturing there's a couple things I want to learn how to do like the shaded paper coloring I want to learn how to do and then texture I need to get better at texture we should uh, we should do an episode on texture yeah, I really like the textures. We should do an episode on texture and invite Jason Engel. Because he does plan. a lot of texture. This Sweet. one is Poisons. It's a Volt Orb. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We did an Ammon Cat pre release and we were like, well, we, we're not sure we want to be recognized, so we, we should put down a. Instead of Team Argo. Put down a fake name. Oh. We put down Jason Engel. We were Team Jason Engel. <laughs> it was wonderful. And that's a little bit of revenge because. When he goes to restaurants, he puts the reservation down as Steve Argyle. <laughs> so Poison said the Volt Orb just went boom out of excitement. He just got so excited for your sketch and scotch, Steve, that he just exploded, and he's sorry that he ruined your audio. This is Dan's bonus. Oh, gosh. <laughs> West oh. is back from the dead. Why did you bury him near your cable line, Steve? That was a mistake. Well... We didn't yeah. we didn't call blue stakes and have them mark out our cable <laughs> lines. This is our this is our so, problem. It's a note to self. So whenever you bury a body, call blue stakes to make sure you're not near your cable lines. Yes. Dan said this is actually his first J Doodle, but he just had to do the Lop Lop singing opera. <laughs> well they are both awesome. This is uh this is Blackwell art. <gasps> oh cool, I'm sorry, I totally thought we were at the end. You're right. Not quite. Sorry. We're almost there. I like that, and that almost looks like our cat. Yeah, it looks a lot like. Yeah, it looks a lot like Cinder. Yeah, yeah. Give our cat a few more years, and a little. Let, let it become feral along with your bunny slippers, <laughs> and it'll look exactly like that. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't pet um, Cinder, Steve. <laughs> this is what Cinder's gonna do. I dare you pay attention to your computer? Can't stop not the me. show. To... Pet me now. This is Cat's BFF. Oh, that's BFF! <laughs> yes! Bob the turkey and Wes are both haunting my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when I go to work tomorrow, I'm going to show these all to, to Wes. He's the biggest, he's the superstar of the show. Yeah. Bob the turkey's it's becoming like, evil. He's attacking He's scared. What did you do? Well, it's because you've been making fun of eating him the whole time. Bob, <laughs> Bob's gone feral along with the bunnies and the cats. Oh, Wes's ghost. Are Wes's eyes bleeding? Yeah, he's a ghost. Is that what ghost's eyes do? Some. Actually, Kat's BFF mentioned that before. She's like, yeah, my picture's a little dark with some <laughs> funny parts in it. And then she's got in there, Steve, I found a good J-doodle. It's my voice coming from the inside. So this is Justin. He has the, uh, the glam rock or punk love oh, up. I love it. it it's... <laughs> The rocker, <laughs> rocker lop a lop did his, uh, bl blew out your mic. <laughs> it will do that. Aaron they Schroll did a little emoji cute, that shows powerful. the arms up in the air, too. Just like the little <laughs> rocker. I like the teeth, too. <laughs> Along the side. And actually, that is a lot what Steve's snowball mic looks like. And Panda managed to, uh... Panda's do... is a squirm work. Well, she also did a J-Doodle. What? Panda did a J doodle? Yeah, in the last like 20 Panda, seconds. You're, wow. <laughs> little protester. A little, little protester mouse. <laughs> That's so oh. Wow, Panda, that was quick. I, I, and I'm going to say this, and Dan will be a little frustrated, but I think that's faster. That's our fastest J doodle I've ever seen. That was, uh, super it's quick. even faster than Dan's one J doodle. Bravo. And Panda Squirm Work. Panda Squirm Work. See, I think Panda very much sympathizes because they had their power out. <laughs> so she sympathizes with the no, with the technical difficulties. The cute little turtle. Oh, that's their childhood drawing. 
That's adorable. That's a good that's adorable. turtle. That's her new one. Yeah, that's that's a picture of what she. Uh, that is her modern picture of what she drew as a kid. That is super cute. Super cute. And she also has another mouse with a party hat. Because <laughs> mouses party along with the turtles. Um, this is a rework of. This is the very first thing that I did in 3D. So I thought, you guys have seen lots and lots of my drawings. Maybe I'd, I'd revisit a, a little little 3D thing. But I, like I said, I didn't really get time to... Oh, I see where you're going with it. Well, I was having a hard time finding anything that was particularly old. Yeah, I, I agree Kaima with that. says that it looks like a bit, it reminds them of Veggie Tales. Oh, yeah. It totally looks like an old school Veggie Tales. I was going to say, I was going to agree with uh, Minion Prime. I wanted to see the dresser. I was really hoping for a dresser this week. Were we gonna put up a uh, poison stripes little? Mm -hmm. Yep. Here it is. Mess of the minions. Minion. <laughs> that is a very clever way of getting rid of a mess. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, and it actually works with the whole idea of mess of the minions, where there's like mighty um, things that have gone missing or they broke, and and one of them might be the portal gun, and the one steals the portal gun to clean up the mess of the their mess. And, Takes it away from one of the other minions. I should totally steal that and put it in the game. I'd like it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's super clever. Why don't we have portal guns? This is a technology that needs to happen. Somebody call <laughs> Elon Musk. But uh, thank you so much, guys, for coming and participating. We are so happy to have everyone. Thank you for people who submitted squam work. And um, and J Doodle. So Steve is writing now what his squirm, what the squirm work is. So this week's squirm work, we're gonna do something a little bit more serious. I think everybody should do a master study. So take a piece of artwork that you like, that's got something about it that you want to learn, and copy it. Do a study from that. And the last thing I forgot is Scott brought us a Prezi back from oh, yeah. Spectrum. Oh. Oh. Our brown piece we were talking about brown. Yes. And it's fine. Black wing. And it's oh, says two Steven cat. Oh. It has a little that little goblin drawing. This little goblin thing. Oh. Oh, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott, and thank you, Brown. Thank you, Scott, and thank you for everyone, everyone, for uh, being online and hanging out with us. Come back next week, same bat time, same bat channel. So I hope to see you all next week, and uh, ta-ta for now.